Okay, so to create this effect, I've got a super simple composition set up here. You'll see it's just a 1920 by 1080 in 30 frames per second. So we have super smooth playback on an LED screen. Um, of course, you can do 3840 by 2160 if you want 4K or any custom aspect ratio, depending on what screen you're working with. But let's go ahead and call this 3D Grid. We'll hit OK. So to create this 3D Grid effect, we're going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and we're going to create a solid that's a little bit bigger than our composition. So I've already got this at like 4,000 by 4,000. That should be just fine. Color is white, and that's great. We can hit OK. We're going to go to Effects and Presets and type in Grid. And you'll see under Generate Grid, we can take that effect and just drag it straight onto our clip here. Now, like I said, this is really big um, and you know way bigger than we need it to be at the moment. But when we go up here, we can go to Size From and change width slider. And that kind of gives us a single slider by which we can you know, control the size of this grid, which will be helpful both now and later. Let's do something kind of around, uh, that feels about right to me. And now the next step is to come down here to this little box and toggle on our 3D layer. We're going to then rotate it. And this is all kind of by eye, but let's say we do something maybe, you know, uh, around 82 um, degrees there on the X rotation. We can go to our position properties by hitting P and we're just going to bring this down a little bit so that we have something a little bit more sort of, you know, to fly over because we're going to duplicate this for above. Um, that's feeling about right. I want these grids to be a little bit bigger so we can easily just change the width of our grid. So what we can do to animate this is we're going to come to the very beginning of our solid here. We're going to hit the stopwatch on the anchor effects in grid. And then we're going to move forward, let's say, you know, three seconds just to sort of get a feel for things. And we're going to take this second property because it's X and Y. And with the Y property, it's going to allow us to sort of create that feeling of, you know, uh, flying straight forward through this grid. And we can just drag this and you can see that we've already got this animation that's feeling really awesome. So if we were to maybe come, you know, uh, let's try right there, play this back, see how that's feeling. Okay, so that's pretty fast. And of course, we can change that by, you know, either extending uh, the position of that keyframe, depending on the length of our clip, or actually, you know, changing that Y uh, parameter on the grid effect. So to reveal where our keyframes are um, for the solid, we're going to hit the letter U on our keyboard. And that brings up our keyframes, which basically just reveals all of the effects that are happening for that clip. I'm going to take this and I actually want this to be able to loop at the 15 second point. So I'm dragging this out until this keyframe is right at the very end. And what we can see is basically we can get a sense for how that's feeling as far as the speed that's feeling a lot better. And now the problem that we're seeing is the fact that it kind of jumps at the end. If we want to create a, a seamless loop here, I want that to be a seamless transition that feels like, you know, nothing's changing even when it cycles back around to the zero point on our timeline. So to do that, what I'm going to kind of do is I want to create sort of a visual cue by which we can, you know, sort of sync these up. So I'm going to take the Y slider at our first keyframe here. And what I'm looking at is the bottom line. I'm looking at right where that white kind of disappears off of the grid. I want to create that keyframe right there. And then I'm going to kind of do the exact same thing. Actually, I'm going to do it for right before. So I want to make it where it's like right before that white disappears. So maybe like right there. And we're playing back now. And this should. Yep. So that is a seamless transition, an endless loop. But for now, let's go ahead and create that sort of uh, roof layer. And to do that, in this case, we're just going to use a, an adjustment layer. We're going to go to New Adjustment Layer. Make sure that's on top. And we're going to go up to our effects and presets and type in mirror. And we're going to drag that over to our adjustment layer. And nothing happens to start. But if we change the reflection center, uh, or sorry, the reflection angle to negative 90, you can see that we have a perfectly mirrored um, you know, situation there. So super easy to do. Now that that's built, we can kind of change this and it's going to affect, you know, both sides equally. So even there, there's kind of a cool, maybe some inspiration for, you know, some sort of animation that you could do with that, um, just with, you know, adjusting the parameters of that mirror. 
I want to sort of come in and, and create more of like a long tunnel type experience here so we can you know adjust our position and rotation um and that's feeling pretty good right about there i'm really liking that so now that we have that obviously we can also change you know we can always change the width and the uh border size on this grid and it's going to affect it perfectly um let's see maybe something a little bit wider for this one and then you know we can kind of ch take this border and make it a little bit thicker, maybe around nine. Now um, we can go ahead and sort of fix this issue that I was mentioning of it sort of having this hard fall off, um, you know, going sort of from a perfectly clear line to just like nothing. So to do that, uh, we're gonna go to layer, new, solid. We're gonna create a black solid. And this one I want to be, you know, the same width as our comp here. So let's say 1920. But our, our height, I want it to be maybe only around, you know, 400, uh, maybe, maybe 500 for safety. You can see we've got this solid black there. We can go ahead and get a Gaussian blur and drag that onto the black solid. Build this out here. So it's kind of, you know, you can kind of see that it's kind of creating that horizon effect already. And that's feeling pretty awesome besides the fact that it's we're kind of, uh, you know, seeing some of the uh the the corners of this effect so to do that we can just hit s for scale we can undo this um equal scaling issue there and just scale it wider but leave leave it feeling you know nice and uh, skinny and kind of even adjust that even further so then we can continue to sort of adjust how much of a fall off we get on that we can even go a little bit bigger and that's feeling pretty awesome we've got this sort of like infinite perspective if I play this back at half, it's feeling really smooth. We have that sort of, you know, perfect seamless loop at the end. Now, if you wanted to take this a step further and kind of give it even more of that sort of Tron feel or that sort of, you know, retro feel, we could create another adjustment layer and then go over to tint. We could change the color of uh, this to maybe instead of a white, we go to maybe like a, an orange. And you're going to start to see, this is kind of how I built out my modular retro elements. So kind of find a nice sort of reddish orange there. Feels very uh, retro and cool. We can do some more things to kind of add to this effect. We can go to our TV pixel from Robytes, available on AE scripts, and just drag it on there. That's obviously way too much, but, you know, maybe something like two and four. That's feeling good. Maybe blend that with the original go to like 50% blend. That's feeling awesome. And then we can add a glow. My personal favorite glow, like I've mentioned, is deep glow. So we can throw that on top. And we've got a super retro feeling sort of animation there just with a few simple steps. So that's that. And I uh, hope you can put some of these effects to use, whether it's for this effect exactly, or you know if it sparks your imagination to do something unique with it. So there you go.